It is 2024, year of our Lord, and I want to start on a note of positivity, so let's talk about my most anticipated movies. Hey, what's up? My name is John Bonjour. I'm an artist and a film enthusiast, and last year was kind of weird for movies. We had some really good ones and some ones that I was really happy with, and then also some that I was just kind of disappointed with, didn't really live up to the hype. Hopefully this year is going to be different. It is definitely unique in some ways that we'll kind of get into as we're as we're going through this list. Um, but there aren't a lot. I'm really excited. There's not a lot of movies that I'm looking at on the list that I just have no interest in. The only one that I can think of off the top of my head right now is Kung Fu Panda 3, 4, 4. And Argyle, I'm a little confused on um, because I, I like Matthew Vaughn, but I just don't. I don't get the sense that this is any different from The Lost City. It feels like that exact movie. Hopefully it's not. I hope that there's a, a kind of twist throughout that, that makes it something different and unique. But either way, new Matthew Vaughn movie is a good thing. It's just not making my list because it's like, I don't, I don't totally know what to feel about that. And then of course there's like the Mean Girls musical, which I don't really care about, but I'm sure will be fine for the people who like that. It's just it's not really my cup of tea. But there are a lot of good, really good looking movies. And that is a perfect segue into my number 10 on this list. Three movies that I think are probably gonna be garbage, but I'm so excited. <laughs> Guys, I know there are so many people who have no interest in what Sony's doing right now. I'm fully aware of that with the Spider-Man franchise. I am not one of those people. There is something so delicious about Venom, Venom 2, Morbius, I'll say it, Morbius. There's something so uniquely special about how many times they've made bad decisions that I just, I don't know, I can't help but love it. They're stupid, they're horrible, dumb movies, but they're so much fun for me to watch because every time I do, it's like, it's like I'm, I'm constantly surprised by how they actually thought that any of this was a good idea. And for that reason, my number 10 is Venom 3, Madam Web, which, oh boy, and uh, and and Craven, The Hunter, a movie I forgot existed until I looked at a list of upcoming releases. Moving on to number nine, that brings me to Nosferatu. You've seen like one image from it, that's why it's so low on the list, is just because we haven't really seen anything from it, but it's directed by Robert Eggers, and he has not missed as far as I'm concerned. The Lighthouse was great, The Witch is horrifying and incredible. The Northman was really good, it had some issues, but it was really good. And so this is like him taking on a Nosferatu, it's it's a match made in heaven. It's perfect. And I just, I just can't wait to see what kind of weird, quirky shit Willem Dafoe gets up to. In a similar vein, a movie we haven't really seen much of anything about, maybe a behind the scenes picture, Beetlejuice 2. I don't, I don't feel like I have to defend that. It's Beetlejuice 2, it's, we're bringing everybody back. It's Beetlejuice. I don't get the sense this could be based on nothing, but I don't get the sense that they're gonna make a sequel to Beetlejuice without a reason, because it's a thing that's been shopped around so many times and a thing that they just keep, I feel like for the last decade or more, somebody has been like, oh, we should do Beetlejuice too. The fact that it hasn't happened, even though Beetlejuice is a cult classic, I can guarantee there's enough people who love it that a new one would make money. So it's like, what was stopping them from making it up to this point if not? a good story or a thing that they wanted to like stick to, adhere to keeping the Beetlejuice, I guess now franchise good. But whatever it is, I'm excited. I can't wait for Beetlejuice. I love that character. I love the world. It's weird and quirky and silly and fun. I'm excited to dive back into it. Who knows if it'll be anything, honestly, but it's on my list because it's I'm, I'm just so curious with what they're gonna do with it. Hopefully it's not one of those kind of requel, retread the original things. Who knows, it could be anything. Keeping in the horror vein, number seven is Maxine. It's the end of the trilogy, sort of, that kind of went two, one, three. Anyway, it's Ty West, he made X, he made Pearl. This is the third in that series, and I could not be more interested to see what happens here. X was a complete surprise. I had no idea what I was going into, and it, it blew my mind. Like, it was just so entertaining and so interesting and fun and really well-crafted. I went back and watched House of the Devil, Ty West's other movie. I'm, he might have done others. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, and it's it's great. He just has a handle on crafting a really crowd-pleasing and also pretty legitimately scary slasher horror kind of vibe. Pearl came out, I think, six or eight months after X, and it was just like 
a complete surprise. Nobody knew that it had been shot, and then they just announced it like the day X came out. And then at the end of Pearl, they announced Maxine. So it's like, I, I love this weird thing that Ty West is doing with the announcing projects directly after they, the first one or the new one comes out. I think that's great. I can't wait to see what Maxine becomes. I believe it's a sequel to X. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be really fun. If nothing else, it'll be just a weird kind of crazy slasher movie. But I've heard it described as like a kind of a giallo, which is uh, incredible. Just tremendous news. That's a genre of Italian slashers that really kind of peaked in the 70s. Um, still a couple of dripping out here and there that are good. But yeah, it's like if they stick in that kind of world, I, I mean, sign me up. Number six is Lisa Frankenstein. I have seen a trailer for this. It looks hilarious and weird. The thing that sells me on this movie is one, I don't know, I like poppy neon vibes. I appreciate when a trailer and a promotional piece will have like goth and neon. I don't know why, it just works for me. I'm a simple man. I like weird, weird stuff. But really the thing going for this movie the most is that it's written by Diablo Cody, who wrote Jennifer's Body, which is such an underrated movie, it's insane. This seems weird and fun, and it's coming out around Valentine's Day, which I think is just a good idea. Number five is Saw 11. Don't know anything about this movie, have seen nothing about scripts or rumors or anything, but it's Saw 11. <laughs> like, how would I? It's Saw. It's Saw. Of course I'm gonna be excited. Saw 10 was incredible. It was, like, probably my favorite Saw movie. Maybe full stop. I'm back in on the Saw franchise. If I was ever really out, which I can't say that I totally was. Uh, who knows, this could be terrible. This is definitely one of those franchises that there's like a great movie and then a bad, bad movie sometimes. So it's like, this could be the worst one. I appreciate that we're in a world now where trailers and promotional stuff, usually, generally speaking, doesn't come out a full year in advance before the movie. And in this case, I don't think that they've shot it yet, so that helps with that. Number four, a movie that I didn't believe existed, uh, Furiosa. This is something that they've been talking about for years since Mad Max Fury Road. There's always been this like, okay, what's the follow-up? But I just got the sense that they were never gonna make this movie. I'm not entirely sure where that came from, but I just, I just felt like that wasn't gonna happen, and that was kind of disappointing, because obviously more Mad Max is good. And then the trailer came out and it was like, oh, you guys are actually, you're actually making this movie. This movie exists. Awesome. Some of the CGI in the trailer has been a little contemptuous. I get that. Some of it doesn't look super great. Some of it looks horrible, but some of it doesn't look, I mean, Fury Road was pristine. It was one of the most impressive visual pieces of cinema. The incorporation of digital effects was absurdly good in that movie. So yeah, if it's not that, that'll be a little disappointing. I'll tell you what though, I'm gonna get over that real quick. Even if, if if the worst thing we saw in this trailer is all of the movie, I can get over that because more Mad Max and now Furiosa, who's a great character. I'm excited to see that. Anya Taylor-Joy, she looks incredible as Furiosa. She fits the part perfectly. What's not to like about this? My number three pick, there was a trailer, ironically, somewhere in last year. I don't remember, it's all a blur. Uh, Mickey 17. The reason that that trailer doesn't bother me is because it, it doesn't mean jack shit. It doesn't show literally anything. This is directed by Bong Joon-ho, who, once again, has not missed. Parasite was my first introduction to him, as I think it was most people's in America's first introduction to him. After that, I went back and have been working my way through his filmography. Mother is a movie that I will not, um will not forget, and I don't know if that's good. Bong Joon-ho is such a tremendous director. He's got such a grip on his films, whatever he wants them to be. Even things like Snowpiercer that are a little bit out of his wheelhouse, I think are just so rock solid that I could not be more excited for whatever he chooses to do. And in this case, what he chooses to do is Mickey 17. What does that title mean? Couldn't even begin to tell you. My number two pick, and this was so close to being my number one, is Dune Part Two. Chapter two, part two, part two, part two. Dune part two. I love Denis Villeneuve as a filmmaker. I loved the Dune book. It's a weird book, but I loved it. I adored the first Dune movie that he made. David Lynch's, don't even get me started on that. But I loved this movie. I think it's one of the most impressive visually and sound design wise that we've gotten in years. 
So I cannot wait to see what the rest of this epic looks like. And then hopefully if they continue into like Messiah, that'd be great. But even if they don't, this is already gonna be one of the most impressive stories ever put to film. And that brings us to my most anticipated movie of 2024, Joker, Fully. no, I'm just sorry, I'm just, I'm totally joking. It's absolutely Deadpool 3. Of course it's Deadpool 3. There is not a movie that could even slightly brush how excited I am for Deadpool 3 exclusively because of the Wolverine costume, okay? I love, I love the Deadpool movies. Deadpool 1, hilarious. Deadpool 2, also quite funny. Not quite as good as 1, but also better in some ways. So, you know, balances. I cannot wait for Deadpool 3. I think this is exactly what the Deadpool franchise needed because it, it needed to be shaken up a little bit. Two felt very similar to one. So I'm looking forward to something completely different for Wade Wilson to go on, a completely new adventure. And it's also exactly what Marvel Studios needed. Like exactly. They are putting one movie out this year, a thing that has not happened since I believe 2012, possibly before that. And quite honestly, they could use the room to breathe. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think Deadpool is a movie that they're confident in, something that I don't think will be super affected by a lot of the other kind of drama going around. Although I do wonder, just in terms of Kang, are we keeping Kang? Are we losing Kang? With this being a big multiversal story, I could see that playing into it, although it didn't really into Spider-Man or Doctor Strange. So maybe it doesn't. Maybe Kang is not really involved in this at all. I don't know. But either way, I'm ludicrously excited that this is a nice chance for Marvel to breathe, recenter, refocus, focus on the movies that they have coming up and making sure that they're incredible, you know, what they what they should be. Even for things like the Marvels, I liked the Marvels a lot, but it had its flaws. Guardians 3, flawless, incredible. I also liked Ant-Man. Don't leave, don't go. Hey, don't go. I liked Ant-Man 3. I don't think it was great, but I liked it. I think it's fun. But even I can admit, that there have been some missed shots. Do I think they landed in a fun place? Absolutely. But they're not as good as they used to be. Like, they're not as solid as they used to be. When Captain America and the Thor movie, well, some of the Thor movies. But my point is that I think Marvel's in a good place. I think that they are giving themselves an opportunity to kind of reassess and refocus, a thing that they probably need. Not as direly as some people might think, but definitely an important thing to do. And really more than anything else, Wolverine in a, in a, in the in 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 the Wolverine costume with the yellow and the blue and the Wolverine bits how could you how could you not be excited about that like i said this is an exciting year i can't wait to see what good movies come out and i'm looking forward to growing the channel with you guys so here's to 2024 i hope it's good for you thank you for watching this video and checking out my channel if you'd like to hear more of my thoughts on movies comics tv shows christmas trees uh, throwing away Christmas trees and how badly that can go for some people and their cars. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment down below what you'd like me to review next, and uh, or do none of that because I am not your dad.